Hello there. Welcome back. Uh, we are going to talk today some more details about the MOSFET current meter. So as you can see, I am using the voltage source VDD. And from that VDD, I am using a register R to draw the current I reference. Uh, this is also my input current called as I in. And in fact, uh, I need a mechanism to produce this uh, current source uh, to deliver the current I in to my circuit. And then using the pair of MOSFETs or BJTs, I can mirror that current into another branch which will be called as I out, which should be a replica of this I reference or I in. So for now, I need a circuit to generate this current I in. Uh, I'm using a simple resistor as a passive to generate this current. And this uh, current is flowing in the direction as shown. Then I have used two identical MOSFETs named as M1 and M2. They have these uh, respective pins called as drain, gate, source. Here also drain, gate, and the source. And there is a fourth terminal called as a body or substrate of the MOSFET. So we'll not talk about fourth pin in much in detail. We'll just say uh, we are tying the body or substrate of the MOSFET to its source. So there is this short circuit, as you can see right here. I'm tying the pins together, body and the source. And for the MOSFET M1, I am tying the pin drain to its gate. So the gate, drain and yeah. gates are shorted together. And therefore, I would say that the VD g of this mosfet is equal to zero so such arrangement in the case of bjt we call this as a diode connected transistor diode connected transistor and in case of a bjt we because of that we had this exponential relationship between the input current ib versus input voltage vbe uh, and uh, for a uh, MOSFET, you don't have such exponential behavior. Rather, you have a quadratic uh, relationship between the drain current and the uh, voltage. So we would not call when such MOSFET is connected uh, in this fashion where drains and gates are shorted. We would not, uh, we may call it as a diode connected transistor just for the sake of simplicity. However, just note, it would not have this exponential relationship like BJT rather it will have a quadratic behavior. Now, because of such short circuit between drain and the gate, M1, is always going to be operated in the saturation region. Saturation region. Now, uh, we know the IV characteristics of the MOSFET, this specifically the output characteristics of MOSFET. We have this drain to source voltage and we have this drain to source current. So output voltage versus output current for given values of the input voltages because that's a field effect transistor. So input voltage is your voltage between gate to source, which is uh, VGS, okay? So that's your input voltage, VGS. And once, uh, I, as I said, because VDG is equal to zero, M1 is always going to be in operated in the saturation region. So what is a saturation region? So your current rises with the increment of VDS initially. However, if you increase VDS further, your transistor is likely to be saturated for a given value of VGS. So the region left to this is called as triode region or linear region of operation and region right to this is called as saturation region of the MOSFET and the, this is a constant current uh, ideally and uh, if you however in practically there will be a, some slope and the slope of this line is equal to 1 over RO where RO is basically your output resistance of the MOSFET, 
RO. So we have discussed a uh, few points about this concepts in our previous model. So if you are new to this, do go back and refer to those modules for the study. Now, coming back to our discussion, uh, when the MOSFET M1 is operating in the saturation region, we uh, have the expression between for the current flowing, that is ID, which is a drain current. So it is always a function of voltage between gate and source, which we applied right here, and also the voltage between drain and gate. So this voltage, so drain and gate is equal to zero, and therefore the current is given as one over two KP, where KP is some uh, process parameters. W is the width of the MOSFET, geometry l is the length of the channel again the part of geometry of the mosfet and then vgs minus vth is called as overdrive voltage vov and take a square of it so that's why you see the current has a quadratic relationship between voltage uh, and the uh, current and then in bracket you have one plus lambda vds lambda is called as channel length modulation channel length modulation so channel length modulation means your drain current ids should be constant with the increment of vds however there will be a slight rise as you can see there will be a slope here so slight rise of ids with the vds when there is a channel modulation present lambda is not equal to zero when lambda is equal to zero you can neglect this term and your current is only limited to these terms right here. Further simplifying, you get this expression, which is the form of drain current, one plus lambda VDG. VDG, of course, uh, is zero in case of uh, diode connected transistor arrangement, and you have this VGS. Now, there is a output resistance RO, which has a final value after we had seen this before, which is one over id in bracket ve is again some fitting parameter l is the channel length and vds is the electric voltage applied between drain and the source so we got this value and remember this relationship uh, when for a mosfet uh, the drain to source voltage is always equal to the sum of two voltages that is the voltage between drain and gate which is zero in the case of m1 transistor plus the vgs okay so that's how it goes now uh we said that m1 got operated in the saturation region therefore the value of current in the saturation is given by this expression neglecting the l equal to zero this term id is limited to only this value okay uh one plus one over two kp w by l vgs minus vth square where vgs minus vth is called as overdrive voltage so you have such arrangement okay. mosfet m1 operates in the saturation region we can say that your voltage between drain and the source which is here the drain and the source vds is equal to vgs which is because the drain and the gates are shorted. And this should be greater than VGS minus VTH, where VTH is the threshold voltage, turn on voltage of this transistor that you must uh, overcome in order for the transistor to operate. And this is this should be greater than or equal to VGS minus VTH. And this is called as overdrive voltage right and therefore in the previous slide we saw that the current is equal to half kp is the parameter w over l in bracket vgs minus vth whole square so you see the behavior of the transistor now the value of i reference we have used the register r can be calculated so i reference can be said as vdd minus VDS or uh, VGS because VDS and the VGS are same for the MOSFET M1, right? Divided by R. 
okay you can also write at vgs here so you see i'm using r to set the value of reference so if r changes the reference voltage will change therefore instead of using r to generate i reference i need a self bias of a dedicated circuit to generate such value of the current now since the m1 is operated in the saturation region we would like m2 would also be operate in the saturation region and for that we would need the appropriate voltage v out across the drain and the source pin of the transistor ideally the voltage at this node should be equal to voltage at the this node so that your transistor m2 will also be exactly operating in the same way the m1 is operating and this v out is uh, we will get the expression for the v out now and the drain current when such situation happens your drain current will also be then written as your i out which is nothing but your drain current of your transistor 2 this is for the transistor 1 which will be same as 1 over 2 kp dash w over l this is for the transistor 2 this is for the transistor 1 this is for transistor 1, okay, and this will be for transistor 2, VGS2 minus VTH2 whole square, right? So, this is how you see you get the value of the drain current 2 for the output transistor. And we assume that the transistors both have same threshold voltages. And we also assume that the voltage uh, at this node is equal to at this node and in fact this should be the case so now you have this voltage vgs which is the voltage between gate and source of m1 that also appears to be same for the vgs of mos transistor 2 right and we have just said that the threshold voltage is vth1 is equal to vth2 of both these transistors Therefore, we can say that your output current is equal to the input current. And for that, we would just take the ratio of the two currents, which would be, let's say, I naught divided by I reference. So you see the value of I reference is nothing but your drain current here, right? That is the way. So I reference, which was set by the uh, resistors and the uh, voltage source it is also equal to id1 this is equation one and this is equation two so substitute the value of i naught and i reference so you will get assuming that the vgs are same vths are same so you will have the ratio of w over l by two divided by w over l by one so by merely setting the dimensions of each MOSFET, you can actually have the current gain, required current gain. So if you want to have the current gain equal to one, set the W by L ratio of both the transistor to be same. If you want the current gain of N, then W by L of second transistor should be N times the W by L of the first input transistor. So this is how you can see we can design the simple MOSFET current and uh, based on that uh, you can okay. just use the current mirror circuit using simple MOSFET transistor. Now uh, uh, when your output current IO is equal to I reference your second MOSFET will mirror the current of the first MOSFET and there is an effect of output voltage on the output characteristics that we have simulated uh, in one of our videos so what you can understand from here you can draw the curve back your output curve that is your output current which is your id2 and this is your v out which is your output voltage this voltage right here and you are going to have such curve and this is the slope of this curve will be 1 over RO, where RO is your output resistance. And 
here, somewhere here, your transistor starts to saturate, for example. So this is called as V overdrive. So V out should be greater than or equal to VGS minus VTH, which is equal to V overdrive. Okay, somewhere uh, before that, you can have VGS minus VTH and your output voltage should be equal to VGS. Okay, somewhere this is uh, this one and here somewhere will be your VGS and this will be your VGS minus VTH. So your output voltage should be minimum VGS. That's why we basically uh, use the diode transistor connector, diode connected transistor for M1. But for M2, we don't have such arrangement. So this voltage here should be minimum VGS of the transistor. So hope you like this video. If you did so, just click the like button, share with others for wider reach and stay tuned for more informative and detailed oriented content like this. Till then, wish you happy learning.